I want to begin the conversation with Palace on the Sea. It looks very different from your other feature films. It's very experimental. There are a lot of camera movements. The sound is interesting. Um, it looks more like a dream than reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the inspiration for this? Okay, actually, uh, the Palace on the Sea till now is the most expensive film for me <laughs> because it was shot by uh, 4K quality camera, yeah, Sony F65, and because uh, my previous three film, feature films just show with, you know, like a DSL uh, camera. And uh, after I finished uh, three feature films, I was invited by uh, one city called, in Taiwan called Kaohsiung, yeah, the government of Kaohsiung, they invited me uh, to create uh, video art or film, whatever. Uh, they let me whatever I want to do in, in the city. Yes. And uh, so I choose, I choose a place in the city. It's a harbor in Kaohsiung Harbor because there's a restaurant, floating restaurant, yeah, uh, parking at the harbor. And this restaurant, actually, it, it was a seafood restaurant built in Hong Kong in 1995. A businessman from Taiwan, they built a restaurant in Hong Kong and drive the ship, yeah, the restaurant, floating restaurant to, to the Kaohsiung Harbor and to run a seafood restaurant, very expensive restaurant. And then during the, like the Asia finance crisis, so their business is going down, even though they couldn't afford the like the, 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 car, the parking field to the port authority. So the, the restaurant, the ship, uh, was detained by the authority. They couldn't go. So it's being like uh, destroyed, older, older. And uh, because in Kaohsiung city, there's a lot of immigrants labor from Southeast Asia, from Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, Burma, so during the holidays, some uh, labor they are dating in the in the in the in the floating restaurant because <laughs> empty it was empty, very old and destroyed. And that's why when I was there, I saw the the ship. So I I I I was thinking and I want to yeah, make a film for this floating restaurant. Yes, that's the beginning of, of the short film. Uh, and of course, there is no script. We just go there, yeah, shoot the film uh, one day, yeah, like uh, eight hours shooting. Yeah, it's become the film, yes. Um, Wu Kexi, you by the time you made um, The Palace on the Sea, you have actually played a Myanmar woman several mm -hmm. times in Middle yes. films. Um, can you tell the audience your background and how you prepared yourself to become a Myanmar woman? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, hey everyone, I'm Wu Kexi, I'm pure Taiwanese. I have nothing to do with, uh, with, with Burma. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, I was a stage actress and, and a dancer in Taiwan. Uh, back in uh, 2000, 2010, I made the record MIDI and he invited me to be part of his project, which he's about to shoot in Burma. And he needs a, a stage actor to uh, perform, uh, follow the way he wants to combine with all the non-professionals. So I started to learn uh, Burmese and the Yunnan dialect uh, before the shooting in Taiwan and uh, prepare all the things to let me to be like Burmese, yeah. And so uh, before the shooting, I uh, did a lot of research, and we just went to Burma to shoot lots of uh, uh, to shoot uh, ice poison and uh, poor folk and uh, lots of shorts. But the palace on the sea, which uh, this one is, we shot in Taiwan. So this is the first time I. Uh, when I was shooting films, I, I don't have to feel scared or I don't have to 
uh, feel like I might be taken by the policeman. It, it was a very comfortable shooting, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you normally work with MIDI without a script. Yes. So tell us how he, what he told the actors, what's going to happen. Uh, first, uh, before the shooting, I, I was sent to the place we are about to shoot, and I, I will leave with the uh, neighbors, the people with, uh, I will leave with them, and uh, uh, they all know um, my name is Sam May, the name in the film, and we uh, hang, hang out a lot, and uh, they are used to me, and I'm used to to them. So when we are shooting, uh, there is no awkward words or, yeah. And director will just, uh, he has really good eyes on casting ca characters. And because like the mom, uh, okay, sorry, uh, because, oh, yeah, all the characters, they all like very good natural talent actors. So he just uh, told us what's the goal for this scene and uh, we just uh, Im improv very naturally. But of course, the, all the cast he chose has the similar experience uh, with the uh, characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. So uh, when I spoke something and the character uh, can sp respond without thinking, I think, like that. Um, Midi, I, I know that you, the original intention for Return to Burma is actually very different from what uh, ended up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the initial idea and how it became the film that we just saw? Okay. Yeah, Return to Burma, actually the first, the, the very original script is very different to this one. Yeah, the Original story is yeah almost about okay a construction by Miss Walker working in Taiwan when he heard his home country Burma is going to be her first presidential election after 50 years so he decided to go back to his home country to find some business to do and and that's similar and the story started from Taiwan and he go back to Burma with his friends, Ash, Ash, and uh, he got money from his friends because of his friend was died in the construction uh, site, and he took all of the money. Actually, he in the original script he didn't give the give the money to his friend family like he cheated the family. He used the money to buy a jade but he was cheated again by mafia. So finally he, buy, he bought again and shoot the mafia. He, and, yeah. and, uh, and finally he was killed by his friend's uh, little brother because he cheated their family. Yeah, that's the original story more. <laughs> <laughs> the one you didn't see. <laughs> yeah, the one you didn't see, maybe you, yeah, we'll never see, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the original script. And actually in, in Taiwan or in Asia, when we were uh, preparing our first debut, it will be very difficult to get any money because yeah, people or investors, they need us to prove, okay, how you should film or how dare you shoot such kind of dramatic or big budget film. So I couldn't get any money and then Finally, yeah, I got some from uh, like a agency, yeah, cast agency, uh, and the agency we have a contract like I I need to use their one actor to be the main actor of this film, so we we signed a contract. I got some money, so I we we were planning to shoot a film with very minimum budget, but before three weeks. Uh, go back to Burma to shoot a film. The agency they deny it. Yeah, they because they realize Burma is maybe very dangerous, you know, country for the actor. So the actor disappear. <laughs> yes, before three weeks, so I couldn't do anything. So I just told 
uh, told my line producer <laughs> who is the main actor in this film. Yeah, <laughs> actually he he is my line producer. So okay, we 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 didn't have you know. We only have uh, you now. <laughs> yeah, we just have you. So if you couldn't find any money or any actor, you needed to be the the main actor. <laughs> yes, yes. So we shoot a film like this, very improvised, depends on the location, depends on yeah, what happened will follow the real happening yeah, things to change the script. So it becomes the one you saw. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wang Xinhong is actually somebody who grew up with you, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah, Wang Xinhong uh, till now, he doesn't want to be an actor. He wants to be a producer, but he he was forced to be an actor. <laughs> and yeah, he he was my neighbor in Burma. We we are the same, very similar background. We went to Taiwan, but I went to Taiwan since I was uh, sixteen. He went to Taiwan like uh, he was twenty. Yes. And uh, what kind of crew did you have? What condition was it when you were making the film? For Return to Burma, we, we, we shot some scenes in Taiwan. In Taiwan, since actually, we have like a five crew, include uh, Ke Xi. Yeah, Ke Xi that time, he like, uh, yeah, was uh, assistant writer. Yeah. And uh, in Burma, we just have three like the song, location song, and me and the main actor. Yeah, we were three. So totally we, we were just like five crew finished the film, yeah. And you made the film with $5,000 US. Yeah, maybe 5000 or 3000 I I forgot. <laughs> yeah. because, because, yeah, we just bought like three tickets, yeah, for from Taipei to, to yeah. Burma is all is all that yeah because we were staying in my in my home yeah in my house yeah because my mom and my eldest brother they they was they are still living in in Burma so um because she mentioned earlier that um, there are other non-professional actors mm -hmm. so how did you choose these people who did, who are they and um, how did you work with them uh, actually at the beginning I. I did try to shoot the the dramatic uh, dramatic one script. Yeah. So when I arrived in my hometown, I went to visit some relatives. Uh, someone they did have you know the the mafia background, <laughs> but it would be very dangerous because not dangerous. It would be like out of control. They couldn't be controlled like you told. You tell them how to act, they deny it. Yeah, they have their real experience. So it will be very <laughs> difficult to control the real mafia. So I, <laughs> so I just get off yeah, the, yeah, I just get off the, give up the, the, the original script. So I visit my relative again. So I try to like visit some, someone they are full of, a, life experience. Like everyone you, you saw in the film, mostly they tell the story is their life from their real life, like the, mom, the mother. Yeah. Her daughter is really cheated by, yeah, to China, was married to a Chinese farmer. Yes. So such kind of like this. So uh, we did do the audition a lot of people, the local people, they come to uh, casting, yeah, because we, we also gave them the money, yeah, because they are daily, like their daily life, they earn the money is quite low. It's like uh, every day maybe they just could uh, maximum, some, some, some. yeah, three American dollars. So, mm -hmm. but for, for us, if they are, you know, the main actor, they may get like a, like, okay, fifty five zero dollars so it will be, yeah, many times of that. And so a lot of people come to uh, the casting, the audition, and we choose someone they are quite good in talk to share their real life experience. 
So we shoot a film like this. And to work with non-professional, I think it's very, very great. Yeah. The most important one is just let them uh, trust you, believe in you, be very familiar with you. It will be very easy. Yes. And to, of course, work with a uh, professional, it will be another kind of way. Like, because she, wa she was stage actress, so she may realize and was very sensitive to the camera. When the camera put in, set up, they will be, you know, act. <laughs> <laughs> so so sometimes uh, professional actor needed to, uh, to take so a long time to, you know, to, to forget their performance. But for the non-professional, another problem is they, they couldn't be precise as you want. So you need to follow their real life to change your script yeah, like that. Speaking of real life, um, you told me about the, the, the actor or the non-professional who plays the brother of Xing Hong, who actually in real life was trying to get work in Malaysia. Yes. What yes. happened to him? Uh, yes, because in, in Burma, actually, after junior high school, most of the young people, we, we didn't have, we don't have so many choices. Yeah, because we don't continue to school because we yeah we might realize even though you got a PhD or MD you couldn't find job in Burma till now. So most of us after junior high school we may decide yeah to go abroad. Yes, of course someone most of us illegally to go to like to Malaysia to as a tourist and then you know walk illegally like that. So the the main character's brother, Arthur, actually he did has plan to work in Malaysia. So when I arrived in, in my hometown, they are waiting for the passport. But they were cheated by the agency because they gave agency the money, but they never get the passport. So until now, just this year, because he didn't get a passport, so he decided to work in with some Chinese. They are illegally doing the wood business in Burma. But just la la last three months, yeah. yeah, he was arrested by police because yeah, now he was put in jail like 18 years, the real character. Why? Because very complicated because he worked with Chinese businessmen who doing wood in Mandalay, not Mandalay city, like a very remote region close to Mandalay. And the, the Chinese businessmen, they use drug, opium at the mountain, and the police come to arrest the Chinese businessman. And the other, the guy, was very nice because he, he, may, he might think the Chinese people, they, they, they don't speak in yeah, Burmese. Uh, yeah, yes. when the police came, he could have run away. Actually, he was, he was <coughs> not on the seat. He was because he was responsible for for cook for doing cook or buy things and take care of the, the, the Chinese men. That's his job. And then when he heard that police came to arrest him, and he ran back to the state and then to tell the policeman that uh, I want to translate for the, those Chinese because they yeah. And so the, Chinese, the police say okay, so just uh, you want to come okay, so come with us. But he doesn't know that when they all come to the uh, police office and then they just say, uh, you and them, you, although you don't use, but you, you, comp you accompany them or you kind of like seduce them to use the opium, so you are guilty as well. So they, all, they are all put in jail for 18 years. Mm. Mm. Um, Midi, this film, Return to Burma, is somewhat autobiographical, not exactly in terms of the story, but um, I think in terms of the emotion because uh, you went back to Myanmar about a decade later mm -hmm. and you made this film. How was it like for you to return home after such a long time? Yeah, almost like the main character uh, experience. But of course, very different because I, I was a student in Taiwan. Yeah, during studying, I also do 
Yeah, I, I was uh, doing some job in restaurant. First time, I think, uh, because I left from Burma in 1998. Yeah, first time I, uh, after 10 years, so 2008, I go back to my home country. And almost everything is, is the same. Yeah, because that time I graduated from, from university. I also I was also thinking to find something to do in Burma, but yeah, couldn't find anything because everything is the same. Even though no electricity, yes, yes. So almost the same ex experience, yeah, to, uh, with a main character, yes. And uh, we, as outsiders, know that Myanmar is going through like political reform. The country is opening up. Are things actually changing there? Yes, I think it did change, but very slowly, yeah, very slowly. Especially, even though now, I think mostly is changing for yeah, economic, yeah. But bes uh, with the exception of economy, nothing changes, yeah. Especially, I think the two problems, the two main things is about the education and the medical. Uh, like in Burma till now, even though you are very upper class people, you could be easily killed or die, you know, because of a very easily cure fever. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. I don't know why, because in Burma, actually, there's a lot of richest people, and the government they could uh, invite or hire foreign doctor go inside in Burma build this, the the hospital, but they they don't. Even though the president, you know, San General, they quite yeah, they are the 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 main authorities. When they got cancer, yeah, they went to Singapore or Thailand. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. It's not like this, okay, Burma is very poor, so we, we couldn't buy any medical, technical, or science you know, uh, equipment. We couldn't build a hospital. It's not like this. It's like uh, the authority, I don't know why, they don't let people free to buy medical things. Yes, it's like, not, I think, Mostly in the war, some undeveloped country or poor country, mostly yeah, the, the terrible thing is mostly connected to the political. Yeah. So if economic change, if, the, if everything changes for economic, I think it might not be good because the main thing is the political, yeah. the real democracy. If, yeah. Because you've been to Myanmar for several years, so what is your perception of this changing Myanmar? Well, you mean what I As someone what who's observing changing. from the outside, but you're also deeply involved. Uh, I was extremely ill when the first time I came to Burma, and I couldn't, just like the director said, I uh, didn't trust the doctor there, so I so the so Midi become a doctor and uh, he gave me medicine and then I, I just ate the medicine he gave, and this time I just came to Burma maybe, uh, uh, the in the end of February, and I think things are quite the same, but. When I was there, uh, 2011, there's no Wi-Fi, but nowadays there's Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I think something is changing, but especially in the capital city or Mandalay or Nebido. But because we, uh, the place we shot is in a uh, near border or in the middle city, so things are changing very slowly. Yeah. I'm just going to ask one more question and I'll open up the floor for you guys. Um, you mentioned that um, your films are the way they are because of circumstances, the budgets, working with non-professionals, and uh, shooting without permission, for example. Um, the 15-minute palace on the sea is, has a higher budget than any others. 
Um, it's shot in Taiwan, and you didn't have to go guerrilla style. So I'm just wondering if you were to have more resources and freedom, would you have made your films very differently, and would they look more like the palace on the sea? I think each film could be very different, but they may have uh, uh, very similar uh, insights. Yeah, maybe the diaspora yeah, in all of my films till now. Yeah, I think uh, whatever, whoever, even though, even though Steven Spielberg or you know, you know, even though very commercial director, they have their uh, team in whatever kinds of their film made. Yeah, I think budget and the equipment resource is just uh, one one point of things could make the film appearance look like very different. But the inside, almost, I think, the same. Yeah, the same thing, yes. All right, who has questions? Okay, right in the middle. We have a mic coming your way. Thank you. I'm I was here last night, and it's real insight to see two in a row. I've spent the last two years for a few months working on peace building in Yangon with a small NGO. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, would you consider doing any of your films in Yangon, which has such a similarity with Lazio, but moves into a whole different historical and, and vibrant city? Yes, actually, yeah, we, we did set up, we, we have just set up an uh, office in Rangoon. Yeah, we have new project will be shooting in Rangoon, yes. Another question? Somewhere in the front. Oh, here. Can you bring them? Anna, right here, in the front, first row. Hi. Um, I had a question about Palace on the Sea. Mm -hmm. So I noticed at the beginning and end you included, I think, a Buddhist prayer. Mm -hmm. or, um, and I was curious about the reasoning behind that, why you chose a Buddhist prayer as sort of, to sort of bookmark the film. And yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, the, the monk, yeah, the monk who, who reads the scripture, in, in the story, actually, he, yeah, he was uh, the, the filmmaker, right, her boyfriend, uh, but he, the, in the prison life, he becomes a monk. So he reads the scripture to let the soul of the, the main character release, like gone. Uh, that's the storyline. And the scripture is also about, like, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Or e include the subtitle. You you may understand, yes. Because the Bami scripture actually sometimes, it sometimes is um, it means if you couldn't do or couldn't, if someone trapped in some harsh condition, if he couldn't escape, so the God may read the 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 the, the scripture, let those terrible things like peace or calm down, like that, yes. Maybe here first, and then that one over there. Hi, good evening. I'm, I'm actually a, a doctor in New York, and I was wondering about the gua sha. I have to look it up. The, the treatment that you, you had the mom apply to the son, that's, that's very interesting. I really enjoyed the the movie uh, MIDI, and uh, it's very moving. It's, it's sad. It has all the feelings, you know, in, including the, the songs um, um, with Romeo and Juliet and longing and she left and this and that. It's, it's very moving, actually. Uh, I was uh, surprised to see that the boys are on one side, the girls on the other side. And even though there are words of love and longing, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a Burmese way to, to act, but they're not affectionate physically. With a mother, you don't see them embracing, kissing, 
or saying goodbye or yeah. crying or anything. Is it something typical Burmese or? I think it depends. Yeah, <laughs> from my experience, yeah, like my my family, we yeah, we we never like uh, <laughs> hug each other or kiss or yeah, say I love you or we never <laughs> yes. But most of the Burmese, yeah, we, we don't kiss or we don't, yeah, hurt. And, 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 okay. and lastly, if, <clears throat> would you, given better um, economic circumstances or possibilities, would you actually return to Burma or have you actually decided to, okay, I'm going back to whatever, Rangoon or Mandalay or somewhere? Yes, yes. You, you have? Yes. Great. Wonderful. Well done. I think uh, my wife has a Thank question. You. There's one over there, please. Uh, hi, um, Director. I am totally blown away by your work. I just want to say that this has been a really um, amazing experience. Um, my question is about your um, inspiration for the use of sound. Um, especially knowing your background, um, you have been um, apprenticeship with uh, Ho Xiao Xian. So I'm pretty sure a lot of comparison has already been made with his work. Uh, what I see is actually more of a overlapping with um, Temi Leung, especially you know about diaspora displacement, displacement, um, the theme, the style. But what really amazes me is the use of acoustic sound um, and um, the Palace on the Sea, and also both in uh, Return to Buma. There's a lot of um, different play of different kinds of sound, including also music too. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, I think the use of acoustic sound actually becomes um, one of the focal point, like the narrator. Um, it becomes one of the central plot. So I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about your inspirations behind it. Thank you. You mean the song? Yeah, okay. the palace on the sea. The palace on the sea. Both of them. Both of them. OK, in Return to Burma, Actually, yeah, I use a lot of uh, music. Actually, those music is the most popular uh, music in, in songs in, in Burma. In, in Burma, most of the young men, actually, we, we used to sing uh, like uh, at night or because nothing to do, too many times. Uh, so we sing song to kill time. So those young men, they sing song every day, every night. And another thing is, I don't know why in some country, poor country in Burma, uh, people, we quite, every day, we quite like live, rely on religion. We go to the temple to pray, to pray, and we, we are we're singing uh, every day. I think, you know, the music uh, could express or could help us or people uh, to forget or to, to express something you couldn't you, you couldn't make it in the reality yes and for the palace on the sea for the palace on the sea actually we we record a lot of the realistic song yeah those song is real record by those environment because there's a district in Kaohsiung called Yen Cheng or no 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 Bo -e, yes Bo -e -te -chi, because the area as before is very old traditional uh, factory. It's not a big factory. It it, it was in nineteen nineties. A lot of uh, electronic uh, factory they build the, the 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 equipment of our boats. But now because of uh, finance crime, yeah, those uh, traditional shop or Factory, they are closed. So, but there are some ones still opening, running. So we went there to to record some real song, combined with the uh, composing. Yes, because that's very important. Because the palace on the sea for me, those these floating restaurant is like a uh, memorize or record the history of uh, ten years happening big event or history of Taiwan. Like at the beginning, in, before 1990, Taiwan is quite good yeah, in everything. It's, it's the four dragon, yeah, best economic country in Asia. But 
uh, in after the a- Asia financing crisis, yeah, is uh, going down, and some some labor from some immigrants from uh, southern east, yeah, uh, Asian, yeah, working in Taiwan. Those immigrants, they are quite eager, actually inside, want to go back to their hometown, but they couldn't because they want to work. They needed to be work at the local. Someone they are married. They are forced to marry to some some local people. So those song is like very realistic record and combine. Yes. One final question over there. In this film, when uh, two people are having a conversation, it seems very often there's a real lag time between or a long time mm-hmm. between a question or a comment, mm-hmm. and then the response. Is that cultural? Is that? Mm-hmm. It's not cultural. I, I think it's nature, yeah. It's nature in, in, in Burma, yeah, when we, we were talking, yeah, when we are talking like, like this. And of course, because it's a film, actually for me it's a fiction. It's written by me, even though no script. Yeah, so it's me who decided, you know, what the, what kind of way the character needed to be act, or what kind of style, or what kind of dialogue. So some things I want to mention is, uh, okay, I decided to let those kind of almost feel, or you you mentioned the culture in the film. Actually, it depends on. Okay, like San ethnic, like Xiang ethnic in Burma, they they speak very very gently, very slowly, and very yeah, nature. And like some 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 ethnic, no, their culture is not like this. They speak very very quick and very rough and very loud. Yes, so it depends. So yes. Asked about the, the scene where the mother's putting some kind of salve on his back because he has an infection or an illness. Oh, gua sa. Oh, gua sa. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what is that? I mean, what? Oh, it's, it's gua sa. <laughs> yeah, most, yeah. How, how to explain? Uh, it's medical cure, yeah. It's a traditional Chinese yes, medical yes. treatment. Yes. But the illness, what's the. What actually? What? Uh, what in Burma? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Even though we we just we just feel a little headache, we are doing the guasa. Or yes. chicks, or chilek, or yeah. yeah. It did work. Yeah. It work. It's work. Yeah. Like when you feel it's too hot, uh, you could release the heat. Yeah, yes. it's, it's like massage or like acupuncture. Uh huh. Yeah. Like and to can get. But get for the, the Chinese yeah. Chinese medical treatment, it did work. It has meaning because it have your body blood. Yeah, like a fluently uh, to to fight the virus. Yes. Yes. Great. Well, we're gonna give away this poster, and you, you guys are gonna choose one of the people who asked the question. You are going to choose that. Am I going to choose? Yes. I'm going to choose the one closest to me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, please join me in thanking Midi and Wu Xi.